So there was a clinking noise coming from the back side of the vehicle. And when I was plugging a tire, uh, I discovered that the bolt on the top of the sway bar link had broken off uh, on the passenger side. So the sway bar link is a, is a relatively easy job. But one thing that you may run into is if there's a sleeve in the middle of the sway bar link that goes over the sway bar link itself. And that sleeve may be rusted to the sway bar link. And even if you can get the bolt off the top, you're not going to be able to get the sway bar link down through. So you're going to need to cut it. Um, and that was the case with my sway bar link. Now, sometimes they rust and they fall right off and the sway bar links are gone altogether. So you won't have to worry about this. But it chances are it, if the sway bar link is still in, you're probably going to have to cut it. Not a big deal. It took about 30 seconds. All right, I'm just going to go through this real quick. Uh, I've already cut the old sway bar link off. You can see there's the rusted bolt on the bottom, and there's the cut. And uh, here's the old sway bar link here. And uh, I just used a Sawzall, clip in a little video, and put the old sway bar link in. This is really simple. There's nothing a lot to this. Uh, so this is the first piece, just a really long bolt with a smooth section in the middle. You're gonna to need to put one of the metal caps that they the kit comes with on the back and then a bushing right here. Feed it up through. Okay. Now these bushings have two sides. You have like a flat side that's gonna to go towards the metal piece. And then you have a little insert piece there that goes into the control arm of the vehicle. So we're going a little insert piece down and push push it down on like that and you could feel those insert pieces once you get them in there separating the sway bar link from the control arm which is kind of neat we got to put a cap on there drop that on and then we'll put our sleeve over the top and this sleeve is what causes all the trouble this sleeve once water gets in there rusts and that's why I mean, I, I banged on them a little bit, but I didn't want to do any damage to the control arm banging on them. So I just took a Sawzall. I mean, it's a solid 20 seconds to cut it off. Uh, drop the cap for the top. Drop the top lower bushing on like so. And then we're going to put it on. Now... On the other side of the vehicle, I have it at the exact same point, okay? So you really wanna do both at the same time. As you can see, I was able to lift the sway bar up pretty easily because on the other side, it looks exactly like this. And all I'll be doing now is dropping this bushing on and putting this cap on the top and then putting the bolt on there, hold it from the bottom and compress it. And I was able to move the sway bar up because it's already detached on the other side. So now I'm gonna go over to the other side, uh, put the top cap on, put the bolt on, and then I'll come back to this side, put this back on, and then I'll tighten the two of them and that's it and the job will be done. This, this is a pretty simple job. I mean, the biggest trouble is this sleeve right here. And if it's all rusted up, you're probably gonna have to cut it off. But I mean, I had a metal bit for the Salzo and I cut through here and maybe 45 seconds uh, it was pretty easy this whole thing for the back of the car has taken maybe 45 minutes to get to this point just because i've taken my time and put it up on a jack and stands and taken the wheels off so it's going to take me about an hour to get this done so on the driver's side of the vehicle the top bolt and top section of the sway bar link were broken right off but over on the passenger side of the vehicle the bolt was still there um, but because on the bottom sway bar bolt on the bottom is sunk up into the control arm you do need a long socket to reach up to it uh, and then just take that bolt off the top but you still can't get the sway bar link down through because that center sleeve was rusted to it and again i just took the sawzall and i just cut it right off so passenger side was a little bit different but still pretty much the same and uh, was pretty easy 
So this is a little trick. Uh, when you put the bushing on the top and then you put the spacer, it's I was having trouble getting the bolt on there. There wasn't enough room. So I just took a pair of vice grips and just collapsed this top bushing and I turned it, left it in there for a few minutes like this. Then I turned it the other way and put it on the other way. And uh, after doing that, I was able to get the bolts right on there. So that was pretty much it. It's a pretty simple job. Um, you know, I used my torque gun to pull the wheel off, but you could just use a crossbar or whatever else. Um, most of the time, the old uh, sway bar links, if they're on there, are going to be cut. Uh, going to need to be cut off. So I use my sawzall for that. This is just a basic entry level sawzall. Uh, you are going to need a metal bit. Um, you are going to want to have deep sockets to uh, reach up and hold that sway bar link from the back side when you're screwing them back down or if you're taking the top bolt on one where the top bolt isn't broken off. Uh, you want to get a little sway bar link kit. I just bought this kit online. Uh, I paid 50 bucks. I got the front sway bar links and the back sway bar links. What was funny was in the front, it turned out that the sway bar links weren't broken. There was this little shield on the muffler that was rattling and it sounded just like the broken sway bar link in the back. Um, but now I got front sway bar links for when I need them. Uh, and then of course you always want to use a torque gun to put your wheel bolts back on to the proper spec. So that was pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you think you'd like to see more, subscribe and we'll see you next time on Kevin's Garage.